The supposedly secret meeting of three old codgers in England planning an ambitious drug smuggling scheme sounds exactly like you imagine it would. You just phone me tonight and say that I'll look at your session. Yeah, that's what I've done. The music's at work. But keep it down as bad. Of course. I've yeah. not said that to you, did yeah. I? Yeah, you yeah. did. The mob reporter here with news of a trio of British pensioners plotting to haul cocaine, heroin and ecstasy in from Europe for Liverpool gangsters. But they were caught red-handed in a covert police probe. And it's pretty cringy. We've got, we've got, got it all. all. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've got it all. We've got a lot. Yeah. You know. We can hit the jackpot, mate, yeah? We've got corona. This case is just one in a flood of truckers bagged at the border trying to get their hidden cargo across the channel into the United Kingdom, one of Europe's largest markets. Let me tell you about it. It's been a messy crush at Britain's ports as a shortage of truck drivers, COVID-19 restrictions, and changing import-export rules under Brexit brought havoc to the supply chain and commercial crossings. In the middle of this chaos, three old-timers hatched the plot in league with British gangsters. 73-year-old Brian Wright owned a moving company with a long and honest history. That's the gold standard for a front company. Wright hatched the ambitious scheme with Alfred Rumbold, age 65, from Kent, and Mark Ewell, 64, from Essex. Here you can see them meeting as they mapped out the scheme. And as you can tell, they weren't good with their operational security. I guess times have changed since their heyday, because not only were they tracked and photographed almost every step of the way, but also recorded. Because uh, you might have to get up in the yard, <coughs> isn't it? Well, he, said to, he said to me, Brian, how many dollars have you got? I said, oh, well, I've got boosted up. Yeah. I said, yeah, I think you runs about 20. He went, oh, happy days. We were in no shortage here then. It's a, it's, a, it's a not your removals in the touch. But the thing oh, is, the other job is also we go to Sunday, we can bring fruit and veg back yeah. as well. Cool, because they want fruit and veg for their cash and carry. Yeah. We've, uh, we've got, got it all. The plug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got it all. We've got a lot. Yeah. You know. We can hit the checkpoint, mate, yeah? We've got the this corona in it. Oh, you're going to do it around the same thing. So you just show me tonight and tell me how much out of it is. You just phone me tonight and say that I'll look at your session. Yeah, that's what I've done. The music's at work. But keep it down as bad. Of course. I've said that to you, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Despite the cringy way they discussed the job, they weren't just talkers. These geezers were really going for it. In July 2020, Wright pulled into Britain at the port of Dover in one of his trucks after making a dry run. He made notes on his phone about security and border checks along the way. The next day, the seniors gathered at a cafe in Kent to go over the final arrangements. These are photos of the meeting you see here. Covert listening devices from Britain's National Crime Agency captured their scheming with remarkable clarity. The next week, Wright headed back to the continent for the real thing, to pick up the load, which was sealed inside fish tanks. On his return journey, he was raided by British and Dutch police on the road in central Netherlands, outside Utrecht, 25 miles south of Amsterdam. When the cops approached his truck, they found Wright, sound asleep inside his cab. Dutch police seized 20.5 kilos of heroin, 32 kilos of cocaine, and 3 kilos of MDMA, known as ecstasy. British police estimated the haul would have had a UK street value of about 4.5 million British pounds, that's more than six million US dollars. His pals were then arrested in their homes. It's all a bit curious. Wright doesn't seem to have needed the money, so I'm not sure what his game was. He was the owner of a seemingly successful moving company, what they call removals in Britain. And his firm wasn't a small one. Wright had a significant fleet of modern trucks, what they call lorries in Britain, from vans to enormous haulers he specialized in national and continental European moves. Here he is when he's not looking stunned in a mugshot. They call him Our Brian, a specialist in moving fine art. His company did work for the National Portrait Gallery, Sky TV, several banks, even the British Coast Guard. 
He had warehouses and transport yards, and his success was signified by the Rolls-Royce he drove. He offers a 5% discount for members of emergency services. I wonder if that applies to police and border agents. Maybe he was bored or having financial trouble. I reached out to Wright to hear his side of things, but I didn't hear back. Ewell, on the other hand, had served time. He sounds like the hard man of this lot. We can hit the jackpot, mate, now. Yeah? We'll just this As for his past, in 2007, Ewell pleaded guilty to nine counts of tax evasion and conspiracy. He was running construction companies, but hiding all his revenue using false identities and family members' names. He and his wife lived well off the scam. They had an executive property on a gated estate, an Aston Martin and Range Rover with personalized license plates, investments, jewelry, and a holiday home. When the fraud unraveled, he was jailed for two and a half years and ordered to pay back the equivalent of more than a million dollars. How did these three old timers plot fall apart? Someone hooked them up with the hottest underworld fad. Encrypted phones, used mostly by criminals to communicate in secret. Alas, these systems had been penetrated by police, allowing investigators to secretly monitor calls and texts. They probably should have stuck to the old ways. When Ewell and Rumbald were arrested, police seized phones with two encrypted apps, AnchroChat and Sky ECC, along with messages trying to connect with gangsters about their pending import services. For more information on the AnchroChat fiasco, I'll leave a link to a previous video I did. These guys didn't give up without a fight, a legal one that is, in that they remained old school. Ewell and Rumbald denied they were trying to import hard drugs, claiming the plot was to smuggle alcohol, cigarettes, and pot. Wright, who was caught with the fish tanks, said he thought he was only moving furniture back to the UK. All three were found guilty of conspiring to import Class A drugs this week after seven weeks of trial in West London. They'll be sentenced later this month. These truckers seem to have eyes only for easy money, without seeing the hard time. Despite the UK border crush, many truckers are getting pinched. The load manifest at the Dover crossing for a truck driven by 30-year-old Karol Niewiadomski from Poland said vintage clothing for a business in Nottingham. I assume there were some cool threads in there, but police were more interested in 50 kilos of coke hidden in the driver's cab. The colorfully wrapped bricks were packed in cardboard boxes and shoved into a compartment where he slept. He denied the drugs were his. He said he left his truck unlocked while on the ferry from the Netherlands, raising the improbable defense that strangers broke in and left him a tremendously valuable gift. Police said his coke had a high purity and estimated its street value at 4 million pounds, equivalent to about 5.3 million US dollars. He was sentenced last week to 14 and a half years in jail. Another truck driver was jailed this week, a Croatian citizen, 53-year-old Predrag Gogic, after he pulled into a UK port following his trip from Belgium. In Dover, his truck was scanned by UK Border Force officers, who spotted hard packages inside the center core of reels of paper cord in the trailer of his truck. Officers pulled out blue and green shrink-wrapped packages, 20 of them, weighing about a kilo each. Investigators say he admitted to knowing about the drugs and said he was hired to smuggle them into the UK. He was headed for Leicester, he said, where his 10,000 euro fee was waiting for him, which is a bit over 11,000 US dollars. Police say if his load was cut and sold on local streets, he would be worth an estimated 1.6 million pounds, which is more than 2.1 million US dollars. His kilos had a curious shape. Typically, bulk coke is in rectangular bricks. These were disc-shaped, like large hockey pucks. He subsequently pled guilty and this week jailed for six years. A similar fate met a Lithuanian truck driver, 46-year-old Robertus Trimelovas, who was also searched at the port of Dover. Border agents found cocaine hidden in three different spaces in the lining of the driver's bunk bed. In total, they weighed 24 kilos, police said. They were conventional brick shapes. He also pled guilty and was sentenced to nine years in prison. And in September, a driver from Birmingham was returning to the UK from the Netherlands with a cargo of nitrous oxide canisters. They're the charged cartridges of compressed gas used to shoot whipped cream out of dispensers. Some of the boxes had been filled with bricks of cocaine and heroin instead. 
181 kilos between them, police said, estimating its street value at 7 million pounds. That's almost 9.5 million US dollars. The 26-year-old driver remains before the courts. Maybe they shouldn't have chosen a load that was already destined for scrutiny, as the canisters of so-called laughing gas are already a diversion concern for police. It seems unnecessarily risky to me, but maybe, just like the old codgers were hoping to boost their deals by selling fruit and veg to groceries, someone running the nitrous oxide deal wanted to hit two markets with the same load. Trucking is a competitive business after all. Thanks for watching.